look at that profile. Don't you lick my nose. Don't you lick my nose. Stop licking my nose. <gasps> See puppy. Look at that puppy. Look at that cute puppy. Hey friends, this is Stinky. I don't know if you've met Stinky before. Yes, her name is actually Stinky. I don't think she knows what it means. So that's a good thing. But we are here. It is another travel day. So I'm getting some extra cuddles in with my pups before I leave. I can't believe it's a travel day again. Like I'm actually still uploading videos from my last Orlando vlog series. They're almost done, but um, I wasn't expecting to actually go out to Orlando this quickly. Usually I leave it about a year. But if you watched my last series, you will have found out that we lost our cat biscuit on our last trip. And that really put a damper on things. It happened about halfway through our vacation. So we didn't get to do a lot of the things that we'd wanted to do. And I was just kind of in a haze for the rest of that vacation. So um, sometime in November, December, I really thought about it and I was like, you know what? I think I need to go back to Orlando um, for two reasons. One, I there were just so many things that I wanted to do and vlog and share with all of you. And two, I kind of felt like I was starting to get anxiety over the thought of traveling again. Uh, I do suffer from anxiety. I try to squash it by facing my fears or the things that are stressing me out. And in this case, I was starting to feel anxiety at the thought of leaving Stinky, leaving the house, going to Disney World again, because it was just, I loved Biscuit so much. I still do, and it was just really traumatic for me. So I decided to book another trip out to Orlando. Flower and Garden Festival is my absolute favorite festival ever, and I've only been once. Actually, I went to the very first ever Flower and Gardens Festival. I didn't even know there was a festival going on during that trip, so it was quite the surprise. And just none of the other festivals that I've been to since then have lived up to it for me. So I'm really excited to get back out there for that. So I decided to specifically book a trip just for Flower and Garden. I was planning on only coming or going out there for like maybe five nights or so but I had a flight credit, which worked out great. And then also last time I was in Orlando, I upgraded my ticket to an annual pass and there are some amazing annual pass discounts. I think like 35% off some of the rooms. So I ended up booking, I think 11 nights. Um, I am really excited, but I still have so much left to do. Like I'm not even packed yet. We leave in a couple hours. I decided to do a bit of an angle change because the lighting was horrible. I don't think it's any better and I'm just starting to think it's my face now. So I apologize for this. I am very tired. I have not been sleeping for like the last few months. This is actually a solo trip for me. It is my first ever Orlando solo trip. I'm really excited about that. I won't be entirely alone because I do have a few friends out there. I actually have a friend from New Jersey who's going to be there at the same time as me. I haven't seen her in like five years, so I'm really looking forward to that. But I will be traveling by myself, I'll be staying in the hotels by myself, and I will be doing some park time by myself as well. Another thing that's gonna be a little different this trip, since Rex isn't coming with me, I decided that I was going to split my trip up into three parts and do three different hotels. And I know I always do three hotels, but they're usually much longer trips. My past two Orlando trips were 20, 21 nights. This one's I think 11 nights and um, doing three hotels during those 11 nights. We are starting off at the Grand Destino Tower in Coronado Springs Resort. After I think five nights there, we are going to be checking into the Grand Floridian. And I say we because my friend Nora is joining me for that part of this trip. We cannot wait, it is our favorite resort. We are just gonna live it up. We're only staying for two nights and I am using my DVC points for that part. We are staying in the new resort studios. They look so gorgeous. Then after two nights at the Grand Floridian, I will be heading over to what has quickly become a very close second favorite resort for me. I'll be heading to Animal Kingdom Lodge. I've already stayed there twice. I can't get enough of it, honestly. I don't know what it is. I don't know if it's like the really serene vibe, the animals or what but I love, love, love that resort. I think I'm doing four nights there. Last two times I stayed there, we stayed in a one bedroom. This time I will be staying in a non-DVC room. I'm staying in a normal resort room. I think it's a king bed, standard view. I would have loved to have done the Savannah view, but I know that I'll be at the parks most of the time. So I just went with standard this time. And I am really, I think that's the part of the trip I'm most excited about because I cannot wait to get back there and have some more zebra domes. I have a serious zebra dome problem. I have a lot of fun things planned for this trip and I don't want to give it all away. So you'll just have to come along for the adventures. And I think I really need to go finish getting ready. I'm doing a red eye flight out of LAX tonight. So I won't be filming too much at the airport and I won't be filming on the plane probably at all just because everyone's gonna be sleeping. I don't, I don't wanna be that person with a bright screen when everyone's trying to sleep, right? Um, my flight takes off at like 10.30ish. I would like to get to LAX by eight. There's gonna be a lot of traffic. We're gonna be driving during rush hour. So 
even though it could take an hour and a half to get to LAX, it might also take close to three hours and we just don't know. So what we decided to do is we're actually gonna drive up to Anaheim for like a late lunch, early dinner. And then we're gonna head, I say we, cause Rex is driving me. And then we're gonna head up to LAX um, and I'm just gonna hang out at the airport until my flight. So I have a lot to do. I need to finish packing. So if you see a mess anywhere behind me, it's because I have a lot of stuff laid out that I need to put into suitcases now. Yeah, I'm so excited. So let's get going. All right, so we're finally on the road. We got Stinky back there with a big smile on her face. She's also kind of stressed because she saw the suitcases, but she'll be happy once she gets to her dog sitter's house. We're just dropping her off for the night, so, or a couple nights so that Rex doesn't have to worry about getting back home in time to her after dropping me off at the airport. And we're on the road. What? Oh, did you put a little peace sign up? Oh, so we're also near a Starbucks, which is why Stinky's so excited right now. She thinks we're stopping there. We're not. <laughs> she's looking for the Starbucks. We're not stopping there, Stinky. Oh, she's a cute dog. So I, we would have left. We're, le we're running a little late. We would have left on time, except that as I picked up my final suitcase when I was packing, I saw there was like a big tear in it. And uh, that's not really good. So I had to swap suitcases really fast and the suitcase I had to swap for is much smaller. So I kind of, we were gonna leave a little early and we ended up leaving a little late. But uh, we were also giving ourselves tons of time to get up there. I think with that suitcase, we're just gonna have to let it go. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> yeah, uh, but we're giving ourselves a lot of time to get up there. Um, it's just, it's like 3.20 now. My flight isn't until 10.30. We don't live seven hours from LAX. So, um, we're gonna head up to Anaheim, grab some food, and then break up our drive a little bit. And Stinky is very excited, but she doesn't know why. So we decided to stop at Cheesecake Factory for some lunch. There's my handsome driver. I grabbed the passion fruit margarita because it's been a stressful day. The airport is busy and it is late, so I decided to stop by the Admirals Club and grab an old-fashioned and just wait out my flight here. It's so nice and quiet. I love it. We've all landed. I am so excited to be back, even though it is only like 5 a.m. and it is still basically nighttime outside. I opted to use Mir's private car service. I'll list the link in the description below. Whenever I travel solo, I prefer not to use Ubers. I like to know that my car is going to be scheduled to pick me up at the airport so that I'm not waiting outside by myself for an extended period of time, especially since I'm traveling so early this morning. So it was really nice to know that the second I got to baggage claim, my guy was already there waiting for me. He helped me with my bags and it was just perfect. cafe and bar to grab some breakfast. I had to get a coffee. I am dying right now. I'm so tired. And I also got the El Dorado Sunrise, which is basically Pog Juice Mimosa. Starting my vacation off right. So I ordered myself a side of fruit. It looks really nice and fresh. I love a mix of berries. And then I decided to get the avocado toast, something a little healthier and lighter. It comes with a nice spring salad on the side. And I got an over medium, I think, egg on top. I'm so hungry. I haven't eaten in probably like 16 hours. So there's my little spread. This is one of my favorite casual restaurants on property. I think it's really beautiful in here. The food's always amazing and the service is always great as well. You can't go wrong with Rick's Sports Bar and Grill. After breakfast, I got a text that my room was ready, so I can't wait to go check it out. Let's go do that room tour. Hi friends, we are here. We finally made it to Orlando. It was quite the journey getting here. Um, yesterday, we probably spent about two and a half hours in the car getting up to LAX. That's just because I was doing a red eye, which meant that we actually had to travel during rush hour, which is not ideal in LA. Actually, it's just never ideal to travel anywhere in LA because driving is always gonna take a lot longer than you want it to. But I got to LAX. Um, I used Miles to get a spot at the Admirals Club, which was really nice because uh, the airport was crazy busy. I was actually shocked at how busy it was for that late at night. There were a lot of red eyes taking off. 
Um, but the Admiral's Club was so peaceful and quiet. I got a seat at the bar and drinks are included. For the most part, there are some things that you have to pay extra for, but I just kept having a couple old fashions and those were included with my like pass. So I really enjoyed that. I'd probably do that again. Um, I, it was like 7,900 miles or you can actually pay $79 to do the Admiral's Club. And I have a bunch of miles that I'm not gonna use, so that worked out great. And I was really hoping to get some sleep on my flight here, but there was horrible turbulence the whole flight. Uh, probably the worst turbulence I've ever felt. Like I've definitely felt bad turbulence before, but it was always like short pockets of it. This was literally from the moment we got to like cruising altitude until just before we landed. It was so bumpy, kept feeling like you're just gonna fall out of the sky. Even the flight tenants were buckled in the whole time. Um, and what that meant was that I couldn't sleep. So I, I took my like sleeping aids. I have to, I can't sleep without them. And I did pass out almost immediately, but then was immediately woken up by the bumps and then I just kind of kept drifting off and waking up and drifting off. So I don't feel great today, but I'm gonna try to power through because that is my plan. Then the bags took almost an hour to come out. So that was a really long wait at the airport, especially since I was so tired and I just wanted a cup of coffee. But I finally checked into Coronado Springs. It went very smoothly. The people at the front desk were super nice. My room was ready. So already a huge improvement over my last time that I stayed here where we got here about 6 a.m. and they told us they'd have a room ready for us in a couple of hours. And that's really nice of them because they don't have to. The rooms don't have to, like check-in isn't until three. So really nothing's guaranteed until after that. But they're like, oh yeah, we'll get you in early. We'll get you in early. So we stayed in the lobby and didn't get a room till 6 p.m. So that was a little tough last time. This is much nicer. And then um, I was able to get on a wait list at Rick's Cafe Sports Bar Grill. I don't remember the name. I'll put it in like the description here. And um, it was basically just a walk up. There was no one there. I think I got there right when it opened. Oh, but it was so good. It was so nice and quiet in there. I have loved every meal that I've had at Rick's. So if you are staying at Coronado or you're just kind of looking for something a little bit more quiet but like with really good food i would definitely check them out my avocado toast was delicious it was nice and light and like they put like a little vinaigrette dressing on it that just really pulled it all together the fruit salad was super fresh so it was a really great breakfast to start my day i am definitely feeling tired now so i want to get this room tour done first up we're going to start here at the front door you can see with this room there's actually quite a bit of space just to the right of the door you can leave some suitcases or your shoes there which i really liked that when i came in there was room to move around a little bit and then just to the right of the door, there is actually a little alcove where you can store probably four suitcases standing up. So that is really nice and handy as well. Here's the view from the front door. Just to our left, we have the bathroom with this really nice sliding door. It's quite large actually. And it has one of my favorite hidden Mickeys on property. How cute is that? The nice thing about these barn doors is that the newer ones do have a soft close feature, so you're not slamming it in the middle of the night. So that is really nice. All right, so we'll start in the bathroom. And the bathroom is actually one of the things I like most about the Grandestino Tower. I like that the toilet is there on the left. You have a nice big double vanity, tons of storage areas, and then a nice big walk-in shower on the right. Makes it really easy to get ready in the morning. The big mirror is lit as well, so it's easy to see yourself if you're doing makeup or shaving, doing your hair. Got some H2O products still, although they're not called H2O anymore, if you'll notice. They just say Disney Resorts, and it's the sea salt body lotion. So it is the same product, but they bought out the company or bought out the recipe for making this stuff. I'm not sure, but I'm so glad we still have these products. I really love this tile underneath. Super pretty. There's two outlets over there, and then two outlets on the left as well. I like that they have that little ledge above the sinks where you can store a lot of your toiletries, but there's also some room underneath it as well to put toiletries. There are two cabinets underneath the sinks. Not a ton of storage space, but you can fit a few things in there. It's also where you find your hair dryer, some extra tissues. This one has a bit more space since there's nothing else underneath there. There's a nice makeup mirror there, and two Rachels. That's too many Rachels, too many. So they have a water closet here on the left. And it has a nice little pocket door here, little pull tab. See if this one makes noise when you close it. I feel like this one will. Yes, that one makes noise. So that one you wanna be a little more careful closing, especially if you're getting up to use the bathroom in the middle of the night and people are sleeping. There's a hook there to hang some towels. There's also some more towels in here. 
Lots of towels in here. Kind of an odd placement for the towels since the shower's on the other side. If someone was coming in and wanting to use the shower but someone was using the toilet, they'd have to wait for them to come out. So that's kind of annoying if you're staying with multiple people, but just make sure you bring the towels out of that room before you shower. And then behind the toilet, we've got this really pretty artwork. This artwork is actually from the animated movie Destino, which was produced by Walt Disney and Dolly. And that's actually what the Grand Destino Tower is really themed off of. You can see this kind of artwork dotted throughout. Really pretty. Here's the bathroom from the other side. You can see that nice big walk-in shower. One of the things I love most about this shower is that you got this huge rainfall shower head up top, plus a handheld shower. That is always really handy if you want to wash your hair, if you have to bathe little ones, because this does not have a tub in here. And then you see that same tile motif again. On the right, you have a little area to store some of your own toiletries, and then they have more of the old H2O products now rebranded. Just outside the bathroom, you will find a very large closet. In here, you'll find an extra pillow and blanket, plenty of hangers, an ironing board, iron, luggage rack, and a safe. You also have a full-length mirror here. It is a little tough to see yourself in. You gotta kind of tuck into the wall and the lighting isn't great, but there is a full-length mirror. Okay, from my favorite part of the room, this time I have a king standard view. I just got the standard view because I don't spend a lot of time in the room looking at the view if I don't have a balcony. But this king room is so much nicer than the double queen. And while I understand if you have more than like two people staying in the room, you need the double queen. But for me, this is just absolutely perfect. I'm really gonna enjoy staying here for five nights. Just past the closet, there's another little bench there where you put your shoes on. There's also some room to store some things underneath. To the left is my favorite part of any hotel room, the coffee station. So Grand Destino does have the Keurigs. They put a few pods in there. It looks like they have English breakfast, some green tea, some decaf coffee, and then they're just standard coffee as well. You have cream and sugar back there. I went down to the shop and picked up some more coffee pods so that I never run out. But you can always ask for refills if you need them. We've got some disposable cups here and an ice bucket as well. Underneath the coffee station is where you will find your beverage chiller. You can see that the beverage chiller is not that large and it's also not very deep, so you can't put too much stuff in there and it's not a refrigerator. We have to be very clear about that because you'll see here there's a little label down at the bottom. It says beverage cooler cools to 41 degrees and above. So it is not cold enough probably to store milk. I'm not sure, I don't drink milk but I would be very careful about storing things that could go bad in here, but it is great for having some nice cold water at the end of the day. One of the other things I really like about the Grand Casino Tower, uh, the Coronado Springs Resort is a convention center resort, so they went an extra mile to give you a really nice workspace if you needed it. This chair has a really pretty design on it. And I remember sitting in it last time, it is actually quite comfy, and there's a huge workspace there Tons of room to get some work done, which I have to do, so this is perfect. We have a lamp here, a really cool looking lamp, and it does have two outlets, but it looks like one of the outlets is being used for that new um, partnership that Disney has, I think with Amazon, like the Echo. I'm not sure, I'll play around with this. It is Amazon, it's right there. But you do have a spare outlet there, and the light's actually pretty bright, so it should be good enough to do some work. You got your nice upgraded TVs. These are great because these you can smart cast to these, so you can pretty much watch whatever you want from your phone, just cast it right to the TV. And how cute is this? My birthday was last week, but this is my birthday celebration trip, so that was really nice that they put that up there. Three big drawers. So I will say that for two people, I think this is a decent amount of storage, three drawers and the closet. I think with the queens, you get like a full-size dresser. Uh, I do remember there being more storage in the last room we stayed in. So for this, it really is just for two people. We have a nice big king bed over here. I really like how spacious this room is. Like there's tons of room on each side of the bed. Sometimes you stay in hotels and like one of you has got like a foot between the bed and the wall. So this is pretty nice. I love the headboard. I think it really fits the design aesthetics perfectly. The lamps are really pretty. I love that all the new updated rooms have this nice storage area underneath so you can store your luggage and get it out of the way. It's just really nice just to unpack and put everything away and you truly feel like you're on vacation. Each side of the bed has another set of drawers. So there's three on each side. Looks pretty decent size. And then you have this lamp. On this lamp, you will find two more outlets, two USBs. This side also has the phone, and the other side has the same lamp, so it has the two outlets and two USBs. 
On either side of the bed, you'll also find the reading lights. I love these, I think this is a really great feature. So a little reading light there, which is perfect if one of you wants to read and the other one just wants to go to bed. And it can be angled, however you need it to be. Really handy, and then it turns off when you push it back in. Another full length mirror over here. This one's a little tough to see your outfit in though, because it is right next to the bed. And then because I have a king room, we have like a little living area, which I just love. It makes a big difference when you're, especially when you're doing long trips, to not feel like you're just staying in a hotel room. It's nice to, like if you have to work, or if you just want to sit down and watch TV, you don't always have to do it in bed. I love this little sitting area. I think it's super cute. You have a single chair over here with a reading lamp and a little table. You can have your cup of coffee in the morning and just relax. You can move those tables closer to the sofa if you want to work from there as well. It does look like this room might need a refurb already though. Let's check this out. The sofa looks pretty beat up considering how new the towers are. I'm guessing leather wasn't the best option. You can also see at the bottom of the sofa as well there's uh, lots of nicks in that leather. Really pretty mirrors behind. I love the gold. Dirt is like dirty gold. And it's kind of like tarnished gold, I guess, look. I really like that. I think it's super pretty. I feel like everything in this room just works really well together. Even the curtains. And the curtains are really nice blackout curtains. I used them last time and had zero issues. And then behind the TV, you can see more of that really pretty design. It's super subtle. Um, I really love the way they designed the Grand Casino Tower and even Coronado Springs Resort, because the rest of the resort is very clean and fresh and the design isn't like super in your face. There's some like little Disney elements, but I think this feels like a very grown-up resort. Uh, the convention center is probably why, because you have a lot of people coming and staying here for work, and they don't necessarily want like all-star resorts or something like that. So if you're looking for something that's like more in your face Disney, this might not be the resort for you. But for me, I feel like this design is really perfect. And there are some hidden Mickeys. You can see some hidden Mickeys in the wallpaper there. All right, I'm using a 20 mil lens, so it's gonna be really tough to see, and it's really cloudy today. Um, but just in front of me, we have the Swan and Dolphin, and I know I can actually see Spaceship Earth. It's not gonna show up on camera, though, just because of how cloudy it is. But that means I could probably see fireworks, which I'm just stoked for, because I love fireworks. So if I get a firework view, that's amazing. Um, this is my standard view. I quite like it actually. I know it's a parking lot, but I like that I can see some water off in the distance there, that I'm gonna see some fireworks. I think the foliage outside the front of the resort is really pretty, so I've got some palm trees just below my window. Can't go wrong with that. And then you can see there, that is where you like pull up to the front door. All right, so that is a king bedroom, standard view room at the Grand Casino Tower at Coronado Springs Resort. I really like this layout of the room. Um, I did not love the two queens. I, I would do that if I was traveling with other people, but for me or just Rex and I, I really like this style of room better. It gives us more space to kind of move around and relax a little bit more on vacation. Uh, this just feels so much nicer. So far, I'm glad that I decided to come here again because everyone that I've interacted with has been amazing. The lady at the front desk was super helpful. Um, the waitress at Rix's was so wonderful. I also stopped by Manchitos to pick up some water and I had an issue with my magic band and the lady took a long time. I think her name was Wanda, so thank you Wanda. She took a long time calling the front desk and getting it all sorted out for me. And so, so far I have just, I feel very welcomed. I feel like I'm at Disney and I feel like I'm on vacation. So I'm pretty happy. Uh, we'll definitely check in later to see how the stay is going as well. But I, I'm exhausted. I'm so tired. I've been traveling for what feels like 24 hours. I have to work a little bit today still, and I'm meeting up with Nora later for dinner. So I have a lot to do. I'm gonna unpack, and I'm just gonna relax for the rest of the day. So we will pick up in a little bit when I feel a little bit more fresh, and I've had a little bit more coffee. Thanks for coming along on this room tour. For Nora's first drink of the night, she ordered the Bloody Mary. This is an off-menu item. She said it's delicious, and even those olives look pretty amazing. Um, definitely one of the better Bloody Marys on property. I ordered the Armada because I wanted something I could only find here at the Barcelona Lounge. It's made with bourbon, cream sherry, banana liqueur, lemon, and cinnamon. It doesn't taste how I'm expecting it to, but it's still very, very good, and I would definitely order this one again. To 
To start off our meal, we ordered a few tapas. I'm going to butcher a lot of the names tonight, so I'm very sorry about that. But we got the patatas bravas, pan con tomate, a huge bowl of marinated olives, and as always, my favorite, the Brussels sprouts. They were definitely the highlight of the night for me. They were cooked perfectly. The pan con tomate has crushed tomatoes, garlic, olive oil, and charred bread. This is a plant-based option as well, and I wanted to love it, and while it was good, it was not my favorite of the night. The marinated olives are delicious. I'm really picky about my olives, but these are so good. They're marinated with citrus, garlic, and crushed pepper, and they also come with some charred bread. And pairing the two together makes it the perfect starter. 100% would get this one again. I ordered the tequila daisy, which is very different from the tequila daisy that you can find at Carthay Circle over in Disney California Adventure. This one is made with hibiscus and soda water and is very light and refreshing, but I definitely preferred Nora's drink, the sangria teeny. This one is made with a base of garnacha, also has vodka and some peach and lime flavors as well. It was so good. I would 100% get the sangria teeny again over the tequila daisy. For dinner, Nora ordered the Rioja braised chicken. This is served with roasted tomato bomba rice, grapes, crispy potatoes, and she said it was very good and that all the flavors paired perfectly. It smelled delicious. I almost wanted to try some myself, but I ordered the sustainable fish, which was swordfish, and that's my favorite. They swapped the vegetables seasonally on the dish to pair with whatever fish is being served. Today, the swordfish sits on top of a vizcana sauce, sorry if I didn't pronounce that properly, and features an asparagus puree as well as some seasoned cauliflower. And while I thought the dish was very tasty, I'll probably skip it the next time I come to Toledo. I would much prefer just to get a bunch of tapas because I found them way more exciting and enjoyable overall. We couldn't pass up dessert and asked our waiter what he recommended, which was the Cafe Con Leche Cho. It's a tiny little cake that's made with dark chocolate and vanilla whipped cream, and you can definitely taste the coffee in this as well. I really enjoyed this dessert. However, it was a bit on the rich side for us after all the food we had just eaten, so we were unable to finish it. And I might get it again one day, but not before trying all of the other desserts on the menu first. So we just had the most amazing dinner at Toledo. I cannot recommend that restaurant enough. Everything we ate was incredible, but more importantly than that, the service was just absolutely amazing. We were at a table that could have easily sat four. There was a convention going on, so it was definitely getting busy in the restaurant, but they never once made us feel rushed. They let us enjoy each and every dish that we ordered, and I really appreciated that. We ordered some tapas, we ordered some sides, Everything was great, and one of the things I think we both really enjoyed was that with our mains and with the dessert, there were definitely little nuances of unique flavors in there that we had a hard time pinpointing, and that just made us enjoy the dish more. It made us think more about what we were eating while we were eating it, and I feel like for the first time in a while, I had a meal at Disney World where eating the food was the experience. And like I said, the service was incredible. I can't remember a waiter's name, and I feel awful for that, but he was... He was really attentive. He kept walking by to see how we were doing, but he never interrupted us when we were chatting. He made sure our waters were filled. He made sure that you know we were never wanting for anything. And I, I truly cannot recommend Toledo enough. It is one of my top five favorite restaurants at Disney World, and you definitely have to go and try it. So that is a wrap on my travel day vlog. Thank you for coming along today. I know it was a little disjointed, but it will get more cohesive from here on out. We are starting our trip off at Epcot, and I have a lot of fun things planned for that but I'm gonna share those details with you tomorrow because I need to get to bed. I have been up for 37 hours and I don't even know my name at this point. So thank you for coming along today. If you enjoyed today's video, I hope you'll hit that subscribe button to come along for the next one. And as always, magic is out there, friends.